the sky's the limit for the Mets today. Their two closest pursuers have already lost, and so the Mets are trying to get cooking. The fans have got it going. The offense is rolling even in the parking lot. Indoors, the Mets broke out last night with nine runs against the Oakland Athletics and try and keep it going tonight. A little instruction is always in order as the Mets get set for action tonight. From Shea Stadium in New York, the CW11 presents New York Mets baseball tonight. The Mets play the Oakland Athletics. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Shea Stadium. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling with you tonight as the Mets and A's play the middle game of their three-game series. The Mets won 9-1 to last night, and the offense really got cooking. And one guy who had been struggling since coming off the disabled list who got it going last night was Sean Green. Yeah, Sean Green was excellent last night. After breaking his foot, it really took him a while to get back into the swing of things. But the swing of things he did last night's ball game, showing great power to left field, hitting his first home run off a left-handed pitcher this year also a line drive double to right field. Looks like Green might be back. And as Green is back, so was Tom Glavin last night. Got his 296th career victory. He'd been waiting a while for that. He really had. He had pitched really well, but the last two starts he struggled against the Tigers and the Yankees. He had it all working last night. He was fielding his position. He got a couple of hits, drove in a couple of runs, but it's really important for your ace, your number one pitcher, to come through for you if you're going to have a role, and that's what the Mets are going to try to continue tonight with their number two pitcher, El Duque. And the crowd showed Glavin a lot of love last night. They loved to do the same tonight for El Duque, and he's gotten beaten around in his last two starts a little bit by the Dodgers and the Yankees. Yeah, he really has. He struggled a little bit with his control. Earlier in the season, he was throwing strike one every single pitch, getting the first hitter out of every inning, but really didn't do it the last two starts. He's going to try to get back on track for this A's team that takes a lot of first pitches. This A's team has struggled offensively for much of the season. They've lived on their pitching, and their pitcher tonight, Joe Blanton, has been red hot. Well, Joe Blanton is one of the special pitchers for the A's. He's 4-0 in June. He's one of those guys, one of the few guys in baseball that averages seven innings per start, 105 innings so far on this young season. And after the Mets and A's played in two hours and 11 minutes last night, they've got Blanton tonight, who's had two games already this year under an hour and 50 minutes. It's the Mets and A's, the middle game of three. All the action coming up on the CW11. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Hummer. Visit HummerMetro.com and check out the H3 Hummer like nothing else. By Chase, more locations, better branches, faster ATMs. By your local Lexus dealers and the Lexus ES350. By Subway, try one of the new super stuffed subs from Subway. Eat fresh. And by your local Chevy dealers and ChevyOffers.com. Here's your Ford pitching matchup brought to you by your Tri-State Ford dealers. El Duque against Blanton tonight. Well, pretty good thing. Opponents average against Blanton is 238 this year. Last year it was 306. First pitcher ever to have a winning record over 15 wins since 1993. I think Bob Tewksbury to have batters batting over 300 against him. Here are your keys to the game brought to you by your local BMW dealers. They'll win the series. They have lost the last six series like the 73 team. Hernandez has got to get the righties. 133 average. The last four hitters in the lineup were right-handed. And keep blending the game. Seven innings pitched per game. One of the few pitchers in baseball that can say that. Well, Mike Piazza is not on the active list, but he is here and in uniform and looking and feeling great as he hopes to make a return relatively soon for the A's. And tonight he'll have the duty of bringing out the lineup card for Oakland. Nice to see Mike back in his number 31. And the fans here at Shea showing their appreciation. Mike will always be loved in this town. Voodoo Child, was that his song when he came to the plate? <laughs> Last night they had a great ceremony for Junior Griffey who made his return to Seattle for the first time since leaving and um, Mike got that kind of treatment last year when he came back for San Diego and this is a nice little touch as well as he brings out the lineup card for Oakland tonight. 
Last night it was Tom Glavin's turn to get on the winning track, his 296th career victory. Gave up that home run to Shannon Stewart, but not much else. Got plenty of help along the way. Mets will try and make it two straight over the A's. First pitch is coming right up from Shea. Here at Shea, the Mets and A's are getting set. It is, uh, it's game time, but El Duque is still in the bullpen. He'll let you know when it's game time. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you're at the Duke, you get to set your own hours. Well, here's the lineup that El Duque will face tonight. Brought to you by your Lexus dealers. One change for the A's, Dan Johnson in, Shannon Stewart out. A bit surprising because Stewart had three hits, including a home run last night and has good career numbers against El Duque. Travis Buck is taken over as the everyday leadoff hitter for Oakland playing left field instead of right as Swisher moves from first base to right field. And I think El Duque is ready to leave the bullpen now. Still quite a walk before he get on that mound. It made it. And he might even take a stop in the dugout along the way. Well, he's going to take the shortcut across the field. Let's look at the defense brought to you by your local Nissan dealers. Ricky Day gets the start. Carlos Gomez with that great play in left field last night to throw out Swisher at third. David Wright at third base. Reyes with that great double play on the grounder out of the hand of Glavin. Valentin gets the start at second base. Green Beltran in the outfield with Duca doing the catching. First Saturday night home game here at Shea in 2007. Kids are out of school. It's summertime. It's a gorgeous day in New York today. Should be just a beautiful evening for a ball game. Uh, very unusual. The team is taking the field and not even waiting for El Duque. Well, they're ready to go. <laughs> even if the guy who will stand in the center of the field is not. Duque taking his time and I guess they'll get the ceremonial first pitches out of the way in the meantime. <laughs> Meanwhile uh, the Mets with a chance to make some hate tonight in the standings because their closest pursuers both lost this afternoon. Boy Philadelphia uh, St. Louis beat Philadelphia at eight to three. The lineup that St. Louis is throwing out there right now kind of a makeshift lineup with all those injuries and the Cardinals will be here for a four game series on Monday night. They made a trade yesterday. They've had so many problems sending healthy starting pitchers to the mound but they made the trade from Mike Maroth from Detroit. And he'll pitch against the Mets here on Monday night. Well, Mike Maroth a talented left hander just trying to fill some holes for St. Louis and then Detroit beat Atlanta today two to one Atlanta still struggling with the bat. Uh, had trouble though against that great Detroit pitcher Justin Verlander. Well they at least scored a run today. Yeah. They had been shut out three straight games and uh, the Braves have lost four straight. They're now just a game over 500. So you know, the Mets have been given an opportunity despite all their losses over the last three weeks. They've won only four of their last 17 games. But the common thread in the Mets victories during this cold spell have been they've gotten great pitching in all their wins. Yeah I just think it was it was nice to see that it was great to see Tom Glavin get a win get the 296 but I was really impressed with the offense getting hits with runners in scoring position. Now there is a unique stat. The Mets have lost six straight series but stayed in first place earlier this year the Milwaukee Brewers lost six straight series and stayed in first. It had only been done twice before in Major League history before this year that a team had lost six straight series and nevertheless remained in first place. What's the phrase lucky that the Phillies and Atlanta were taking gas at the same time. <laughs> By the way the Florida Marlins the other team in pursuit of the Mets they get Mike Jacobs back to that uh, tonight after more than a month on the disabled list. Orlando Hernandez is going to be facing a Oakland A's team with their 63rd different lineup. And that's only in 72 games. 11 start 198 for his career. Nine complete games in his career with a couple of shutouts for El Duque. Duque the last couple of starts having trouble after men have gotten on base against him he had been so solid up until that point getting himself out of jams and you know the Oakland A's are a team that loves to 
be patient, draw walks. And Glavin seemed to use that to his advantage last night. I think El Duque is going to try to use it to his advantage too. Pump that first fastball down the middle, get ahead of these hitters. Then he can go to a slider. We've seen El Duque a lot of times pitch backward, throw that slider for a strike first, then go to the fastball against the Sage team. You might have to reverse that. This year, when you can't be home to watch your Mets on SNY or CW11, check out MLB.tv. Watch every out-of-market Mets game of the season live. Catch those you missed on demand or listen to every radio broadcast. Sign up today. Visit Mets.com, where baseball is always on. Travis Buck will lead things off for the A's. Buck went one for three last night. And it's the emergence of Buck as much as anything that led the A's to cast Milton Bradley aside you know when we left here last night Milton Bradley supposedly had been traded to Kansas City well what has happened is that he uh, is alleging that in his last at bat before he was released that he hurt himself as Buck takes the first pitch strike so that means that if you're hurt player can't be traded he's got to stay with this A's team and they would have to pick up the rest of his salary till he is healthy again. Buck hitting at 281 and Del Duque misses high with the fastball. Travis Buck out of Arizona State. Very highly regarded prospect. They do things a little different in terms of their uh, their rules on hairstyles yeah. in Oakland don't they. As he pulls it foul and they, they have it's kind of been their their modus operandi haven't it hasn't it. Well never when they won those three world championships. Their owner Charlie Finley paid each player to grow a big beard and mustache as Danny Heron. Yeah they, they prefer the long hair look. Of course they had that wild bunch with uh, Giambi and Damon and those guys. On one and two Buck breaks his bat bloops it and gets it over Reyes's head for a leadoff base hit. Now Buck sacrificed the bat. And he'll make that trade. <laughs> Well, a good change, but a good spot by El Duque running away and just an emergency kind of swing by Travis Buck. No play for Reyes. So the first man aboard against El Duque, who even in his better starts over the last month, has taken a little while to settle himself in. Here's Mark Kotze. Kotze missed the first two months of the season following back surgery. And so he's just settling into his year and he can't get the change up and it's 0 and 1. And I think that's one of the reasons why this game started five minutes late. Obviously El Duque having a hard time getting loose in the bullpen. One and one to Katze. It's already his fourth changeup from El Duque, so I give you an indication how he feels about his fastball right now. But again, this is not the first time we've seen this in the first inning of a ball game from El Duque. I never thought it was that bad though before he went on the DL for that bursitis in the shoulder. It seems as it's gotten worse since he came off that DL. El Duque missed about a month. And had been pitching very well since coming back until he ran into trouble in L.A. and then again in the Bronx on Sunday night. On two and one, the runner goes. Katze hits it on the ground, and Valentin makes the play. That's that Reyes covering, and so Valentin was in the right spot on the hit and run as Buck advances to second. Well, four pitches to Katze, four changeups, two-one change, and he gets rolls over to second base and. Katze with the you know, that's usually not must be hurting Katze because that's not the type of player he is. He's a guy that always runs down the line hard and interesting to see what's wrong with him. I remember he had back surgery that kept him out early this season. Hmm. Yeah that is unusual. Yeah. So here's Nick Swisher the number three hitter Swisher 0 for 3 last night switch hitter and he takes the curveball for a strike. Look at Swisher. Look the big smile he's got. You got to be kidding me. First pitch I see from El Duque is a 63 mile an hour Bugs Bunny curveball. 
And it is the first time he has faced El Duque. So now he's been introduced. And another one. And that one misses. One ball, one strike. Look at that ball. Just breaks straight down. It's a hitter. You just kind of give up on it. Well, unless you're looking for it, yeah. what chance do you have? And the fastball fouled off. And that fastball does not have a whole lot of life. 83 miles an hour. I don't really remember that Bugs Bunny curveball. It was harking back to the 75 World Series. And Bill Spaceman Lee decided to use it on Tony Perez, who hit it for a three run home run, ended up beating the Mets, uh, beating the Red Sox that night. One and two to Swisher. Turns out of the way. Of course, it all goes back to that great Bugs Bunny cartoon. That's one, two, three strikes, you're out. Sometimes, if you throw it slow enough and you get a hitter on his front foot, he might be able to get it with a second <laughs> That's cut. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or at least a secondary swing. Eric Chavez, you saw on deck. Two and two to Swisher. He's got a very good eye at the plate. Swisher's drawn the second most walks of anybody in the American League. A 420 on base percentage starting the night. Only Travis Hafner in Cleveland has drawn more walks than Swisher. Nick Swisher, like his dad Steve, a number one draft pick. One of the few father son combinations both taken in the first round. And the curve ball hit to left. And Ricky Lede is right there. That's the second out. Buck back to second and now they're a two away. So Duque is sticking with the breaking stuff against Swisher. Third baseman. And uh, three, this is what El Duque does. He tries to find a way until his fastball emerges. And when it does, he changes completely. He'll start throwing that fastball inside. I think really against this left-handed lineup that Bob Guerin, the manager for the A's, has thrown out there, he's going to have to shoot some fastballs inside against these left-handed hitters. Well, here's Chavez, who had three hits last night. And he takes the fastball inside. You know, it's interesting looking at El Duque and looking at his fastball and then looking at his strikeout numbers this year compared to last year. They're way, they're way down. Almost a strikeout an inning last year, uh, season. This year, 6.6 .6 strikeouts per nine innings. And there's that slow curve in for a strike, one and one. And it makes you wonder whether it has to do with the, you remember he had the, um, the arthritis and he's had the bursitis. And there you see the decrease in strikeouts, the third largest decrease in the big leagues this year. Misses with a slider and it's two and one. I think the big reason why his strikeouts have gone down is it doesn't always the case, but he usually had that fastball where he could throw it at least 87, 88 mm -hmm. up in the strike zone after all those tantalizing curves and changeups that would hitters would swing through. He didn't really have that so far this season. Fastball pulled foul, and that's as hard a pitch as he's thrown at 84 miles an hour, and Chavez got on top of it. Not been a great year for Eric Chavez, and he's hitting just 183 with runners in scoring position this year. In fact, the, the two big bats in the middle of the order, Chavez and Dan Johnson, both have struggled to drive in runs. One of the reasons the A's are second to last in the American League in runs scored. Three and two to Chavez. Well, with Dan Jan Johnson up next, who struggled this season, first base open. You might see that Bugs Bunny curveball here, 3 2. Johnson held out of the lineup last night because he struggled so badly. Travis Bucket second with two down. Now, Duque having uh, some issues getting together with LaDuca there. Oh, 
Well, you know, El Duque will do this with people on base and big moments. He will just slow the game down. 3 2 to Chavez. Fastball pulled down to first. Delgado makes the play. Side retired. So El Duque trying to find himself in the opening inning. Not much gas there, but he's able to hit the pedal and get the A's out, and the Mets come up. Twenty-six-year-old Joe Blanton pitching tonight for Oakland, and here's the starting lineup he'll face. Brought to you by your Lexus dealers. Carlos Beltran, back-to-back -back multiple hit games, only the second time this year he's had that. Ricky Lede gets the start in left field tonight against the right-hander. Sean Green a breakout night last night with a homer, a double, and three RBIs. As the Mets look to keep it going against Blanton, who's been a red-hot pitcher, and Reyes takes a fastball for a strike. Well, red-hot works quick. Set two games under an hour and 50 minutes. He was drafted in 2002, and he was the compensation pick for the A's losing Jason Giambi to free agency. Reyes, two hits and a sacrifice last night, now has a 12 game hitting streak going. And he lays off on the pitch high and stopped it in time. Two and one. Reyes now eighth in the National League in batting. Fifth in the National League in on base percentage. So he's been doing his job. And Blanton, who does not walk many, falls behind Reyes 3 and 1. 1. 1.8 walks per every nine innings, Joe Blanton. A little leather repair in the dugout. And Reyes lifts one to left field. Travis Buck retreating. And he makes the grab. Buck, who had trouble with Sean Green's double last night, did not look all that pretty chasing that fly ball. And that's the first out. The catcher, number 16. Well, in that part of the park here, you'd rather have your outfielder get back there so he settled, but that's called drifting by an outfielder. You don't like to see that. Paul Duca's catcher's mitt getting some attention. Hope that's not his gamer. <laughs> Gonna have to work pretty fast. Uh, Paul better have a long turn at bat here if he wants his glove to be ready in time as Ray Ramirez tries to do a quick fix it as Leduca pulls it foul. And it's always the trainers that fix the gloves. Just have a, a great talent for it. They'll all learn it in the minor leagues how to take care of gloves. And On some teams, there's a veteran backup player who's yeah. the glove guy. Isn't Buddy Harrelson a glove guy? Buddy Harrelson was my glove guy. I'd give him a glove every spring training. He'd break it in for me. It was the best. Loduka fouls it away, and it's 0-2. And now, why would a guy need a glove restrung in the middle of a game? Unless something broke. And you don't think El Duque's fastball <laughs> broke his catcher's mid, do you? Hard to believe. On 0 and 2, Loduca takes high. I have seen the Loduca's glove, though. It's a he likes to use a very old uh, catcher's glove. Some catchers like to have more of a newer one that has more of a pop. But Loduca has one of those gloves that even if you throw 100 miles an hour, it doesn't make a sound. Breaking ball popped up foul, and Kendall watches it sail back in the seats. You know the thing about gloves. They're so much better now. There's so many more companies that make them. They, there's deer skin. There's all different kind of gloves. And in my day, different styles too. In my day, you had at least three, four, or five weeks to get it, get it ready because they were so stiff. Nowadays, guys get them and they play the next day. Mm -hmm. Well, Duke takes the breaking ball low and it's two and two. He'll rub a little. My thing was, well, you can use the natural kind of stuff. I used to use needs foot oil a lot of my gloves. Kept them nice and soft. Some guys use shaving cream. Yeah. Three and two to Laduca. I've seen guys take it and soak it in the spa or hot tub or that the teams have in the training room. Some guys will dip it in water and put it in the microwave or, or in the oven. Three two to Laduca, bounce to Chavez, and there are two away. 
So two up and two set aside by Blanton. It's your local the Nissan dealer's defense. Buck moves from right field to left field. Swisher from first base to right field. Center field to Kotze, of course. Chavez with an error last night. Rare error for the six-time Gold Glover. Crosby, Ellison, Johnson getting the start at first, and Jason Kendall doing the catching. Well, here's Carlos Beltran coming off a good night last night at the plate. It is 10th home run of the year. And as we mentioned earlier, back-to-back -back multiple hit games for only the second time this year. So that's... Uh, you know, two or three nights ago he had a night where he didn't have a hit but he swung the bat well and showed a sign that he was getting ready. Lifts this one to center field and Kotze is right there. And so Joe Blanton gets the Mets one two three in the opening inning. Well Aduka's mid we hope is ready in time as we go to the second. Second inning with no score. And there is Laduca's mitt. <laughs> Better than new. So kudos to Ray Ramirez for some fast work. But Laduca had a seven pitch at bat, which helped <laughs> as Dan Johnson takes ball one. Pressure was on, huh? Well, you have to stitch fast. You had a four pitch inning. Ray would have been in trouble there. There's Ray made like Geppetto. <laughs> huh? <laughs> well, if the glove starts talking, we're in trouble. <laughs> Dan Johnson having a miserable year. Started the year on the disabled list with torn cartilage in his hip. Hit well his first two weeks back from the DL and hasn't hit a lick since. In fact, over the last 32 games, hitting 172. And El Duque gets even two and two. He's one of those guys that he's gotten a few chances here with Oakland that every time they go down to Sacramento, send him down to AAA, goes down there and tears it up. He just has never gotten a, on a real major role here in the in the big leagues. And the breaking ball hit the short. Reyes with plenty of time. And Johnson retired one away. So we're talking gloves. We're talking yeah. care of gloves. Is there is there a particular guy who you played with who had some quirky way of dealing with their glove? Well, there's all different kind of people. Buddy Harrelson used to really love to take care of gloves. He really treated them real special. Uh, Rafael Santana, the shortstop, always the middle infielders, always take care of the gloves well. But Kevin Elster, on the other hand, was one of the strangest I've ever seen. He would just take his glove, throw it in his locker, Sometimes not even know where it is, and he's one of the best fielders the Mets have ever had at shortstop. Mark Ellis takes one and one. Well, you played with Walt Weiss, didn't you? Yeah, Walt Weiss. Uh, Walt Weiss had the thing. We used to call it the thing because no one would touch it. It was so old and so beat up. And Walt, uh, he doesn't do it anymore, I know, but uh, was a tobacco chewer, so that glove was full of tobacco juice. And it was pretty gross. Ellis banging that one off his knee. Ooh, that hurts. I mean, I, I've, I saw Walt's Did glove, you? and it, it was flat. I mean, it was completely flat. He would take it, and you know, if you're at home, you take your glove, and you kind of invert it, push it inside and invert it. That's how he holds it in his locker. He just wanted to make sure <laughs> that it was flat. And he always used to have long strings on it. He was always playing with the strings and pulling on them. I used to have the same glove probably for two or three years. And then I'd, I'd always have a backup and break that one in. And then Buddy would help me with uh, the next one in the next spring training. But for fielders, they're really particular. I think a lot of times they try to go as long as they can uh, with the same glove. Ellis back in there after bruising that knee and then he bruises El Duque by hitting one back up the middle. So the second hit for the A's off Hernandez. Not as much pain now. The shortstop. Well a little seven, slider on the outside three. part just playing pepper. It's Mark Ellis a little shortcut trying to go back through the box. El Duque tried with the skate save or the cleat save to no avail. So one out and one on. And here's Bobby Crosby. 
He was 0 for 4 last night and his batting average has been sinking. As Crosby takes the breaking ball for a strike. Now the opposite end of the spectrum I think we talked about this last year once was Ray Ordonez. You know Ray was from Cuba and was used to you know playing with the milk carton. Yeah. And when he came to the States and all of a sudden was a, a big time fielder so every glove company wanted him to use their gloves. And when he so finally signed a glove deal you know they'd send him boxes of gloves and Ray would take a glove out of the box and use it that day in a game and use it for a week toss it aside take another brand new glove that and is. use it for a week when you can feel like him you can get away with that stuff he was unbelievable. Oh and two to Crosby on the outside corner strike three call. Well, there's a good looking fastball from El Duque not a lot of velocity on it but a great location. Yeah well placed this fastball see it starts off the corner and comes back. Home plate umpire Marvin Hudson. It's a good place for good size strike zone for Orlando Hernandez. That's the first strikeout for El Duque. Now two away, and here's Jason Kendall. Hitting just 217 on the year. And he pops it up. Beltron in shallow center. And El Duque continues to dominate against the right hand batters. And he'll bring the Mets up in the bottom of the second inning with Wright, Delgado, and Green. No score. The Mets' upcoming schedule brought to you by Hummer like nothing else. The A's are here for one more game tomorrow, and then the defending world champs are here for the first time since, well, first time since strike three. <laughs> yeah. Four games with the Cardinals Monday through Thursday night then the Mets go to Philadelphia to start a long road trip that leads to the All Star break. David Wright takes a call strike. Well Wayne Wright who threw strike three not having as much success this year as a starting pitcher. Although he started and won today for the Cardinals. But the interesting thing about Wayne Wright is that he's become a very deliberate worker as a starter. And the Cardinals have made a lot of errors behind him. Right toward the hole and a base hit. Well, the Mets have their first base runner of the game. But David has been swinging the bat very well for the last couple of weeks. Gets the Mets started. This pitch inside too and down. And we've seen a little transformation in David Wright, who always seemed to cover that ball up and away much better than the pitch in. Now hitting more low pitches for base hits. So here's Carlos Delgado, who had a couple of hits last night. And drove in a run 42 RBIs most on the club. And the the A's array their defense very much the way they did last night against Delgado. Not quite an overshift, but moving people around a little bit. Bobby Crosby almost right up the middle but Mark Ellis not in that hole at all really at double play depth. It's pulled right into the glove of Johnson a double play. Well if it gets past Johnson and down the line it's a double. But Johnson able to snag it and turn it into an unassisted double play two out and nobody on. Well, this ball is just plastered by Delgado. And you know sometimes it's interesting when you watch first baseman. That would have been a double if Keith Hernandez was playing first base because he used to jump off so far but most of the first baseman just come off a couple of steps and that allowed Dan Johnson to make that play. So here's Sean Green who had a breakout night last night double homer three RBIs. And even his first time up when he hit into a double play he hit the ball hard. I'm just really impressed with the power he had to left field. That is something that I haven't seen a lot of from Sean since he's been here with the Mets. Big hopper for Ellis at second base. And so Blanton, after giving up the leadoff hit to right, gave up the bullet to Delgado that turned into two outs, and that gets him through the second. We go to the third inning with no score on a beautiful night for baseball. Great crowd gathered here at Shea as the Mets and A's play the middle game of three. And the pitcher Joe Blanton who has one career hit. That was a bunt single. And he 
he fouls it away. <laughs> See, you're not allowed to do that, by the way, if you're a pitcher. After he took that swing and missed, he tapped the dirt off his cleats. That's what a real player does. <laughs> Pitchers are not allowed to do that. <laughs> Maybe there was some mud there. It doesn't matter. You can't do that. Well, you're not supposed to flip your bat after hitting a home run if you're a pitcher either. <laughs> That's right. And Blanton hits it foul. That's like being a, a 30 handicap golfer and reading the putt from both sides. <laughs> Why? No reason to. Well, Blanton able to foul off the curveball. And all that does is force El Duque to throw him another one. This is a big boy, Blanton. And he strikes out on that curveball. Second strikeout for El Duque tonight. So one down in the third. Well, the Oakland Athletics have uh, had a long and storied history in three different cities. They began as the Philadelphia Athletics under owner manager Connie Mack, who was at the helm for 50 years, and they had a couple of glory days there in uh, the early teens and in the late 20s and 30s. Then they moved to Kansas City for a while. Before on to Oakland where Charlie Finley rolled out the mule and they had another great run of success in the 70s as Travis Buck takes a strike. It's uh, it's been such an odd franchise in that uh, they've moved twice. They've had some stretches of great success and other stretches of abject horror shows. Back to El Duque jumped a little early but still made the play and Buck is retired two down. Ball fooled El Duque coming back to him a little bit. Well, he got it off the end of the bat, did Buck, and came back a little bit as a changeup, so he jumped a little early, did El Duque. Really didn't have to jump. Like a hot potato, he got rid of that ball. So two out and nobody on. And here's Kotze who grounded out his first time up. But you know, the 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 Philadelphia A's won the World Series in 1910, 1911, 1913. And uh, finished first again in 1914. Then Connie Mack broke up the club, and they finished last seven years in a row. But then he built back another team, and they won it all in 1929. I mean, that's the kind of franchise they had. And the, really, the same thing happened under the ownership of Charlie Finley later in Oakland. One, two, three inning for El Duque. Still no score here at Shea. Jose Valentin leads off in the bottom of the third with no score. Valentin hitting a 269. Damien Easley played second base last night as Willie Randolph continues to give Valentin stretches of time off. It's the big hopper to Ellis at second, and there's one away. Time for this week's Met CW11 poll question brought to you by NYPD Recruitment. Apply now for the next exam at nypdrecruit.com or call 212 recruit. Today's question Will the Mets be in first place at the All Star break? A little over two weeks away. Log on to CW11.com to vote and tune in tomorrow for the results. In order for the Mets not to be in first place, somebody behind them would have to win. <laughs> Ricky Lede takes ball one. Lede has had 16 at bats since joining the Mets. Four hits, including a home run. This is the sixth game he started since being called up. And he lifts one to left field. And Travis Buck makes the play, two out. We see Blanton on those white pair of cleats. See that discoloration on the front? That's hard rubber. That's just hard rubber and plastic that's melted onto the shoe, and that's the toe plate to really keep your shoe in order so you don't, when you push off the rubber, of course you're going to scrape that toe on the ground. And that rubber stops you from you know, just destroying that shoe. 
Will Duque, the batter, and he slashes one foul. Does everybody wear no, a toe plate? Almost everyone wears one. I never wore one. I hated, I hated wearing one. They always seem to give me a, a blister on my toe. So I would, 35 starts, I would, El Duque's got it also. 35 starts, I would wear 35 different pairs of shoes. Really? I would get a bo box in the first half, box in the second half, pile in my locker, and on the day, take out a crisp one, relace it, get it ready to go. Pitch in the game, and that would really wear down on the front. And then just uh, well, on those days, we should just sign him and donate him to charity. Big hop for Chavez at third, and he throws out El Duque to end the inning. You could have kept the same left shoe, couldn't you? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, you got a style. <laughs> and GHI sponsor a program called School is Amazing. Basically, Met players have gone around to five different middle schools uh, during the school season and just talk to the kids about the joys of school, get them to enjoy learning a little bit more, and uh, now the benefits because 2,500 of those kids are here tonight at Shea and uh, just really a great program, again, by the Mets and GHI. And school is amazing, but you know what, guys? Summer break, pretty amazing as well. So a little reward for their, for their investment into the school and into learning here enjoying a baseball game tonight. Back upstairs, Gary. And Ron, I know I always voted for summer vacation. <laughs> if given a choice. But uh, congratulations to all those kids for their great work in school this year and getting the payoff tonight. Nick Swisher leads off the fourth inning. Swisher flying to left his first time up. So El Duque, who took a little time to settle in in the first inning, has seemed to do that. And uh, even though he doesn't have his best fastball working tonight, he's he's got the breaking pitches going and. He's been able to hold the A's at bay. And he falls behind Swisher 2 0. Can he survive throwing 83 miles an hour? He's one of the few uh, because of his assortment of pitches, and he can change speeds on all of his pitches. And but now he just dialed that one up to 87. But he can't survive behind the hitters. Mm -hmm. He's got to be on top. Here's a strike and it's three and one to Swisher. Jerry Manuel going over the charts. Last night Glavin fell behind Swisher three and zero oh and came back to strike him out. Now El Duque fell behind him three and zero oh and he's worked his way back to three and two. Tommy was so much sharper Ooh. last night. That's the best I've seen him all year. 3 2 to Swisher. Hit hard, base hit. And so the A's have their third hit off El Duque. Second time they've had the leadoff man on. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. So here's Eric Chavez, who grounded out to Delgado his first time up. With Swisher at first. And the curveball has Chavez flailing. Well, Chavez is a first ball, fastball hitter and didn't recognize the spin on that curveball. <laughs> <laughs> Still shaking his head. You go back to it. Now the curve and he was looking for this one yanks it down the line and hooks and goes foul into the mezzanine. Well he was a little more ready this time. Oh, El Duque he didn't like the taste of that. One. This one's a little harder by El Duque and more of the middle of the plate. What he's got to do now is either go hard in with a fastball or keep something away. And he goes away with a fastball and strikes out Chavez. That's his third strikeout. Good changeup down and away to Chavez. Interesting as he was walking away, Chavez holding his back a little bit like he might have hurt himself on that swing. Pride's hurt more than his back, though. So one out and one on. Here's Dan Johnson, and he takes outside. Johnson grounded to short his first time up. 
Dan Johnson out of the University of Nebraska. And he takes a strike one and one. Well, you're really seeing what kind of team this A's team is. They get runners on, they kind of wait mm -hmm. to get their base hits. They don't do too much hit and running, they don't do a lot of stealing. They've only got 29 steals as a team this year. That's next to last in the American League. And, you know, that goes back to the whole money ball concept and uh, that stolen bases are not an efficient way of building offense. Walks and home runs are, are the uh, the staples of that concept of baseball. Working the starting pitcher, getting him up on a high pitch count. As you look at Bobby Guerin, just another in a long line of backup catchers that are now managers. And another in a line of managers that Billy Bean has brought in. I mean, he had Art Howe, who was successful, and he let him leave. He had Ken Maka, who was successful, and he. Fired him, and now he's got Bob Guerin. I mean, the the system works, and both those managers were very successful as Oakland skippers. But you know, ultimately, it's a franchise where the GM kind of runs the show. In the air to shallow left, and Lede with plenty of time to come in, and there are two out. I mean in most franchises if you were as successful as a manager as both Howe and Mako were you'd be there. I mean look at look at Minnesota for yeah, instance. You'd be there forever. But instead Billy keeps bringing in new guys. Well, he and Bobby Guerin are very close. Bob Guerin is the best man at Billy Bean's wedding. They've known each other many many years. Here's Mark Ellis with two out and a runner on. He takes inside one to zero. But I think you made the point. The point the, the, it is. It's a uh, Billy Bean runs that show, and he's got the 100 percent approval of Lou Wolf, the owner, mm -hmm. who not only gave him a seven-year contract but also a piece of the team. You don't hear that too often with a general manager. And again, why not? Because you know, with limited resources, they've been extraordinarily successful. You know, we just had the Minnesota Twins in here who do it a little differently than Oakland does it, but again, a small budget team that's been able to consistently compete in their division and make it to the postseason with regularity. And it's interesting that Billy played for Minnesota and he saw how that kind of worked, but his initial assistant general managing at Oakland was under Sandy Alderson, as you see the A's and the way they played since 1999, and that was a Big market. I mean, big payroll. Mm -hmm. With McGuire and Conseco, Dave Stewart, Bobby Welch. Well, they were very fortunate to put together that great triumvirate of pitching, which, you know, got being started with with Zito and, and Mulder and Hudson. But they've been able to continue to thrive since that trio was broken up. Swing and a miss. One and two to Ellis. I think one of the main reasons is that they've still been able to develop a nice fastball by Duque. That's that high fastball I was talking about. They've been able to develop good young pitchers. Rich Harden, Dan Heron, they got in the trade from McGuire, and then Joe Blanton pitching tonight. Well, Duque ahead one and two. Reached four and foul. Well, the A's are still number one in the American League in staff ERA this year, although uh, recently they've struggled a little bit. That's the starting pitcher's ERA. They're also number one in overall staff ERA. But that lead is shrinking. Breaking ball popped up. Reyes racing out over the shoulder. Can't get it. And the A's have runners at first and third. Now Beltron wasn't going to get there. Reyes was the only one with a chance and tried to make the spectacular play and couldn't quite pull it off. I think this is one of those plays that just because he has that great athletic talent, he got close to it. But it's almost like he heard the stop. footsteps of Carlos Beltron as Beltron was trying to get in there also. Swisher from first to third. So El Duque made a good pitch and got unlucky. Now runners at the corners with two down and Bobby Crosby will be the batter. Crosby took a call third strike his first time up 0 for 5 in this series. 
So in a scoreless game, El Duque has his first moment of truth. And he starts Crosby with a slider ball one. Well, El Duque has been so tough against the right hand hitters. And he's got plenty of room to operate here with Crosby and Kendall, two struggling hitters, the seven and eight batters. Stays with the breaking ball and he gets it over one and one. Well, taught to me by the franchise, and we've used it here on the network, talking about it. There's five outs or six outs that you have to get in the game as a starting pitcher if you're going to have a successful game. They can come at all different times. This is the first one right here for Orlando. Here you see how different it was in those last two starts in L.A. and the Bronx with runners in scoring position. Ellis not fooled. <laughs> one and one to Crosby. Everyone has their different starting points whether you're a pitcher or a hitter and watching Bobby Crosby watch that front foot of his doing a little plie here or on his toe and he takes that slider for a strike so staying with breaking balls El Duca gets ahead on Crosby one and two. Swisher at third, Ellis at first, and two down. No score in the fourth. One two to Crosby. Fastball misses, two and two. Well, El Duque, after the slider for a strike to make a one two, tried to paint a fastball, missed. He's got a couple of different options. Fastball away, double up. That's what El Duque wants. Chop to the right side toward the hole. Run down by Valentin. Side retire. Valentin got a great break on that ball. Had to go a long way to his left and made it look easy. So El Duque able to work around a couple of hits and we stay scoreless. Top of the batting order for the Mets in the bottom of the fourth. And Jose Reyes who Bunted successfully a couple of times last night. Shows Bunt to bring Chavez in at third. Reyes flied to left his first time up. Pulled foul and it's one and one. You know Blanton could have a better record. He's seven and four this year, but he lost a game. To Jared Washburn that took an hour and 47 minutes up in Seattle, two to nothing. Lost the game that Schilling had the one hitter. Easy for Kendall as Reyes left that chop bunt right in front of him. So one away. Reyes had an inkling at first at bat to lay down a bunt, and here it does, but doesn't get it out far enough. See Chavez hits behind the plate. When it does that, it'll just bounce straight up, and Kendall, who's very quick for a catcher, with the easy play. Get that thud off home plate. So one out and nobody on. And here's Loduca who bounced out to third base his first trip. And he takes a strike. And Blanton really settling into a groove. Joe Blanton, number one pick by the A's in 2002 out of the University of Kentucky, two years after Brandon Webb was taken by the Diamondbacks out of the University of Kentucky. You don't think of them as a baseball power. Of course, Blanton grew up in Kentucky and dreamed of playing basketball at UK but uh, he said he realized by his sophomore year in high school that wasn't going to happen. Don't all young men want to play at UK basketball program. Hit the other way and foul. So he settled for playing baseball at Kentucky and Everybody for a kid who was not drafted out of high school wound up a number one pick out of college. Which is a little unusual. It is unusual. Usually those number one picks have been drafted once before, maybe in a later round as a high school player because maybe they haven't uh, you know, physically big enough to play in the major leagues. Well, Blanton's big enough. Yeah, he's physically big enough now. 6'3", <laughs> 240. He looks like an offensive lineman, doesn't he? He's got that solid lower half. Yeah. 
And the breaking ball, two and two to Laduca. Solid lower half, uh, but doesn't really use it. He's more of a stand up, straight up kind of pitcher. Doesn't really push off that much. Good straight fastball, curveball, and change, but just keeps mixing it up and has good control. And it's in there for a call strike three. Laduca down looking. That's the first strike out of the night for Blanton. He does a nice job of hiding the ball, too. Set up inside. That caught a lot of the plate. It's almost down the middle. Well, here's your pitcher's high speed brought to you by Verizon working for you. Blanton topping out at 91. El Duque at 88. Early in this one, and they've matched zeros so far as we play in the bottom of the fourth. Here's Beltron who flied to center his first time up. And yeah, Carlos takes a fastball for a strike. You know, as a Met hitter, if you come into this game and you know that Blanton works quick and has had these two games of under two hours. Broken bat, little spinner to third. Chavez, tough play, safe. Well, it can't get much harder for a third baseman. Not only hit softly, but right off the end of the bat like a cue shot. Chavez did everything he could, but he couldn't get Beltron. That Chavez shaking his head as that ball came out, had a lot of spin on it, but he had a lot on that throw. Beltron just getting in there in time. Chavez, we've already said, those six gold gloves. That was bang, bang at first base. Might have been a tie. Well, that angle right there, if the ball was in the glove, that looks like Beltron could have been out. And that's probably why he was shaking his head. <laughs> yeah. So a two out base runner the Mets second hit and here's right and David takes a slider for a strike. David yep. had the Mets first hit. You know Gary I was just talking about with Blanton he works so quickly that if you're a Met hitter sometimes you gotta make sure you step out on him. Don't get let him get dictate the tempo of the game. You can run on Blanton and he's going to check in on Beltron base dealers have been successful 10 out of 12 this year with Blanton on the mound. And in this kind of a game, you would certainly figure that the Mets would use their running game. Kendall does not have a great arm behind the plate. One and one to right. And Beltron has certainly been running much better in recent days. You see Blanton is wide open. Almost like his body's facing halfway between the plate and first base, and then he closes it up. Breaking ball in for a strike, and it's a head on right, one and two. Now, this is the way Blanton pitched the first time the Mets saw him two years ago in Oakland. In that game, he allowed just one hit over the first six innings. I think Marlon Anderson had the only hit, then he gave up a couple of hits in the seventh and left, and Mets lost the game 5 0. Quick throw and Beltron back. You saw that split two with the five fingers by Kendall. That's just a play that is given to the bench from the bench to Kendall for Blanton to throw over. They're trying to slow down the Mets base running. See Kendall looking for the sign. And that sign is he wants a slide step, fastball away. Well, Blanton chose to throw the first base. So the Mets are trying to slow down Blanton while the A's are trying to slow down the Mets. Mets. Yes. Nothing slows the game down more than speed. <laughs> and all of a sudden he's Steve Traxel. How's <laughs> <laughs> Trax doing? He's got a 500 record over there in Baltimore, isn't he? That what you'd expect. Broken bat in the air to center. And Kotze is right there to end the inning. So Blanton blunts the Top running the game, gets the game out, the and we've got a scoreless game going to the fifth. Looking, Azak Trimboards will donate $250 to Project A. We start the fifth inning. Jason Kendall leads off against El Duque. Good pitchers duel developing here between Hernandez and Joe Blanton. The A's have four hits. The Mets have two. And Kendall takes a fastball for a strike. One and one. 
Wright's playing back on Kendall. You can't play too far back because he's been known to drop a bunt down once in a while, and this kind of game would call for it. Kendall, when he was with the Pirates, had six years in which he hit 300 or better. And uh, his batting average the last couple of years has just dropped like a rock. And we talked about it eight times. He's caught eight times straight. To right field. Green playing that way, but he can't get it. And a base hit for Kendall. Well, you play shallow and toward right against Kendall, but even though that's where Kendall hit it, Green couldn't quite catch up with him. The pitcher, Joe Blanton. Well, hit that way. It was off the end of the bat. Just really did not stay in the air long enough. And a smart play by Green, because I think he thought for a second of diving for that ball. This kind of game, you keep it in front of you, it allows Blanton to bunt. You get an out that way. You let it go by, and he's in score, scoring position. Well, we'll see how well Blanton can bunt. He gets it down nicely, and Delgado will have to go to first. So three, four on the sacrifice, and that moves the runner to second. So Blanton gets the job done, and now the tie-breaking run in scoring position, and the top of the batting order coming up for the A's with Travis Buck. Buck led off the game with a broken bat single to left. He's also hit a comebacker, so he's one for two. And the curveball in for a strike. Well, the A's last night went 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. And uh, that's in keeping with. Their status as the team with the worst average with runners in scoring position in the American League. It's interesting because. You know the the the, the money ball theory is that on base percentage is the best indicator of runs scored. Well the A's are sixth in the American League and on base percentage but 13th in runs scored. So right now that's not working as Buck hits it well to left center field Lede chasing back he's got room at the edge of the track and there are two out tagging and heading the third is Kendall. So Buck gave it a nice ride the other way but now there are two away. The most outrageous family on television is coming to the CW 11 this fall throw the family values out the window and get ready for Family Guy the hilarious hit that keeps critics raving and viewers coming back for more Family Guy weeknights this September right here on the CW 11. So in this scoreless game the A's have a runner at third with two out and Mark Kotze the batter Kotze has been up twice both times is grounded out to Valentin. Changeup misses two and zero. Oh. And again, Valentin with the opportunity. Three times he's gotten caught. Say, and El Orlando Hernandez able to work through some minimal trouble in the fifth inning. Halfway through, still no score. Carlos Delgado leads off the home fifth inning in a scoreless game. Delgado, though, probably has the hardest hit ball of the night for either side. He drilled a line drive to first base that Dan Johnson caught and turned into a double play in the second inning. And Blanton comes inside, and it's one and one. Blanton does a nice job of changing speeds, he throws inside off the plate to. Move the hitter's feet. And again comes inside to Delgado. And it's two and one. Well, that's the game plan with Carlos. Team's been backing him off the plate all year. Two and two to Carlos. 
with Sean Green on deck and then Jose Valentin facing Joe Blanton against whom the Mets have never scored a run. And he's keeping that pitch count low. Hasn't walked a batter. Mets have drawn very few walks recently. But for Blanton, that's pretty common. Off speed, hit to second. And Ellis plays the hop. One away. Well, it's been four years since our Channel 11 colleague Sean Kimmerling passed away at the absurdly young age of 37. And the Mets and uh, Scott Schoenweiss today paying tribute to the Sean Kimmerling Testicular Cancer Foundation. Scott Schoenweiss, a survivor himself. They were out at the ballpark tonight to raise awareness for testicular cancer self-examination. And uh, that's something that every man should be aware of. Not just uh, Schoenweiss, but Lance Armstrong, a survivor. Scott Hamilton, the skater. It's the most common form of cancer among young men, 15 to 40. And uh, those folks do a great job keeping people aware and uh, keeping alive the memory of, of Sean Kimmerling. One and two to Sean Green. Flag at half staff here at Shea Stadium in memory of the young firefighter Daniel Rudak, who perished so tragically earlier this week. Two and two to Green. Pulled down toward first. Fair ball. Johnson with the pickup. Two out. So Dan Johnson positioned well to field that ground ball. Yeah, playing not that far off the line. That ball on the ground. Johnson's able to make it. Nice covering by Blanton. Blanton, by the way, reminds me a little bit of Big Daddy. Rick Russell. Not only the way he looks, big body, big strong body, but that sinking fastball, curveball, changeup. Here's Jose Valentin, and he takes the changeup for ball one. Let's check in with Kevin Burkhart with more on Valentin. Hey guys, I checked in with Jose today just about how he's doing, you know, since coming back and wearing that knee brace. And the good news is the knee feels fine. There's no pain there whatsoever. He said he's still getting used to playing with the brace, though. He says in the field, it feels like it does take away some of his quickness, although we've seen him make some very good plays. At the plate, he says there's no difference at all. He could push off, everything's fine. It's just a matter of comfort. He says every day it's getting a little bit better. He thinks maybe another week and he'll be totally used to it. But uh, at the plate, pretty good field. Something a little bit taken away, but you know, he looks pretty good to us. He's been able to make most plays, that's for sure. 3 and 0 to Jose, and he takes a strike. So, with uh, two out and nobody on, good spot to try and think of one you can drive, but he grounds it right to Ellis at second base, and Blanton continues to hang up the zeros. Three straight ground balls to the right side, and he's through the Mets in the fifth. Still no score. Well, Joe Blanton has been spectacularly successful this month. ERA of 1.44 in June coming in, and he's turned in five shutout innings in this game. Matching El Duque pitch for pitch. Now the heart of the batting order for the A's in the sixth. Nick Swisher leads off. Swisher has one of the four hits for Oakland. And he dribbles one foul. They get five hits for the A's. The Mets have had but two. Talk about Blanton in June and for his career, he's 10 and 4 coming into this game with a low 2.46 ERA. How does that work exactly? <laughs> I don't know. Takes a couple of months to warm up. One on one to Swisher. Did you have a particular month? I always, I, I, my month was July was always a bad month. I always had bad Julys. 
I don't know if it was because of the All Star break or what, but always get off to a quick start, kind of falter late June, July, and then pick it up in August, September. On two and one, Swisher takes low. Well, the Giants have just won a marathon from the Yankees, six to five in 13 innings. Look at that game start. That's four and a half hours at least, right? Yeah. Popped up. And Beltron not moving an inch. Well, maybe an inch. <laughs> and Swisher retired one away. Well, here's your Dodge trivia question for it tonight. Who hit the most career home runs in Philadelphia athletics history? So that would be from the start of the franchise through 1953 as they moved to Kansas City in 54. Is that right? Yes. And then Four. to Oakland in 68. There's Eric Chavez. And he takes ball one. See, there were a lot of great players who played for the Philadelphia A's and then got traded, like Jimmy Fox. Al Simmons. Eddie Plank was their good pitcher, wasn't he? Mickey Cochran. I mean, they had a lot of great players who played part of their career for the Philadelphia A's and then another chunk for somebody else. One and two to Chavez. I'm sure that we have some baseball historians watching who know it off the top of their head. Just missed the outside corner with a fastball, and it's two and two to Eric Chavez. And again, that one just missed, and it's three and two. Eric Chavez, who grew up in San Diego, was not a great fielder when he first came to the big leagues, but has become a gold glover. A perennial one and he gives all the credit to Ron Washington former A's coach now Texas manager in fact he gave his 2003 gold glove to Ron Washington. Now if he could only give him some wins in Texas. <laughs> but, uh, that's a bedeviled franchise isn't it. And one of the things Chavez does that. Tends to get overlooked because you never think about it as far as a fielding third baseman. But Oakland has such big foul territory that he is fearless diving into dugouts, into the stands to catch those pop ups. On three and two, the Bugs Bunny curve strikes him out. That may be the slowest one El Duque's thrown all year. It busted the radar gun. They just posted it on the board here at 53 miles an hour, but they might be guessing. It's like backyard baseball by El Duque. This is what you would do to your little brother in wiffle ball. <laughs> Not sure you could even throw a wiffle ball that slow. And Dan Johnson takes the curve for a strike. And also, El Duque's got it all going on tonight, and Chavez can only marvel at it. And wish he were somewhere else. Fastball misses and it's one and one. Well, his highest pitch has been 88. His lowest pitch has been 53. Who has that big a disparity between pitches? That's more than Sid Fernandez. That's right. Off the fists and it eats up Valentin, but he has time to recover. But a wide throw and Johnson is safe. Valentin had more time than he figured. Johnson does not run well. Valentin rushed it and the error allows the inning to continue. That ball had a lot of spin on it so when it came Second up baseman, Valentin Ellis. did the right thing he got in front of it trying to knock it down but he got it off to the side so it went towards the outfield and by the time he got to it you made the right call Gary he rushed a little too much. He could have really just taken his time delivered a nice strong throw and he would have had Johnson. So here's Mark Ellis with two out and a runner aboard. Ellis has two of the five Oakland hits. The last one was a pop fly that just fell beyond the reach of Reyes, retreating in center field. Johnson, no threat to run anywhere. And, uh, you know, this is a good team for El Duque to face because running teams can take liberties against him. Yeah, and they're not going to do it here.
plus when he's facing a team that runs a lot it, El Duque slows everything down ends up throwing more pitches. So the pitch count 94 on the night. If you can get a quick out here then you can get one more inning out of him. That's why I didn't want to see that error. Mm -hmm. Makes a big difference in his ability to pitch that seventh inning. Ellis pops one foul. And now El Duque ahead one and two. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Infinity, makers of the all new 306 horsepower G. Infinity, design beyond machine. One and two to Mark Ellis. With Johnson at first and two down. No score in the sixth. Breaking ball in there for a call strike three, and Ellis knew it. Five strikeouts for Orlando Hernandez. He is back on his game tonight. Tight breaking ball on the outside corner to get him. Just a gorgeous night in New York. One of the 10 best days of the year, you'd have to say, as Ricky Lede swings over a changeup from Joe Blanton as we start at the bottom of the sixth. Lede flied to left his first time up. It's been a masterful pitcher's duel tonight. One and one to Ricky. Mets have had only two singles off Blanton. The A's have had just five singles off El Duque. Changeup misses two and one. So El Duque is out on deck. Mets would love to get Lede aboard and give Hernandez a chance to sacrifice. Bounced foul and it's two and two. Ball going in behind Howard Johnson, who was out on the field before the game, having a catch with his son, Len, who was recently drafted. Looks like quite a player. He's headed for Jacksonville University in the fall. Driven down the right field line, and that's a fair ball bouncing into the corner. The day heads for second as Swisher digs it out, and Ricky pulls into second base with the first extra base into this game for either team. And the Mets have the tie-breaking run in scoring position with nobody out. Well, nice hitting by Ricky Leday. This fastball came back over the middle. It's supposed to be inside, and Ricky Leday was quick on that fastball by Blanton. See it bouncing around in the corner. Usually this ball will bounce out of play, but it rattled down in the corner and stayed in play. So now El Duque will try and bunt Lede over to third. He fouls off the first attempt. Boy, as a starting pitcher, you got to got to get this down. And generally, with American League teams, there's no fear of them playing the wheel. No, they never play the wheel. They'll play it straight up. American League teams tend to just want to take the out. They just don't face as many bunts as yes. National League teams do. And he bunts and misses. And there's a mistake by El Duque chasing that pitch with the bunt attempt. And now he's in a two strike hole. You know, bunting is, is not that easy. But one of the things you can do to try to help yourself, you want to put the bat over the plate. And if you have to reach for anything, you lay off it because it's going to be a ball. Now he bunts it foul strike three so El Duque unable to get the job done and Blanton has his second strikeout. Well it's interesting isn't it Blanton the American League pitcher got his bunt down and the National League pitcher Hernandez could not. Well we showed you the stats a couple of days ago with American League pitchers are out hitting National League pitchers in interleague games. Maybe that applies to bunting too. El Duque will go down the tunnel for a breather as the Mets try and get him a run here in the bottom of the sixth. Reyes is 0 for 2, fly to left, and then bunted one that Kendall threw him out on. And he lays off the breaking ball in the dirt. 1 0. Boy, that was a nice play by Jason Kendall. That ball looked like it bounced before the plate. But he just gets down and just smothers it against his chest protector and the hustle to get to it. That's a big save right there because the Mets would love to get Lede over to third with one out. Blanton has a couple of wild pitches on this season. Reyes lays off. 
And it's 2 0. I get the feeling that Blanton is not going to really go after Reyes here. Well, he bounced that curve, change up 2 0. He has been featuring many times 2 0 and 2 1 to Mets hitters, that change up. He paints the corner with the change up, and it's 2 and 1. Got Laduca on deck, a right hand hitter and a double play candidate. Breaking ball fouled off Kendall and back, and it's two and two. Before the game, Rick again some tutelage from the greatest leadoff hitter of all time. Ricky Henderson here for the week. And working with his star pupil. Don't hit it in the air, he said. <laughs> <laughs> two two to Reyes fastball a little bit low three and two uh, the curveball by Blanton two pitches ago watch the reaction from Reyes boy that was a pitch to hit <laughs> his face tells it all aye, aye, aye. <laughs> and it's low ball four and Blanton was not going to give in to him on three and two he threw him a changeup. And so the first walk of the night by Blanton, and that puts the double play in order with Laduca coming up. Now, Willie Randolph does not play hit and run very often. You've got a pitcher in Blanton who's right around the plate and a great contact hitter in Laduca. If you were ever going to do it, it's be a pretty good time. Well, it just doesn't look like the way that Blanton is pitching that you're going to be able to put two or three hits together. But I guess the way you look at it now, you got a guy in scoring position, one knock gets you to lead. There's a strike. The Duke has grounded out and taken a call third strike. And one of the strengths for the A's is their defense, especially infield defense. But you'd really love to stay out of the double play yes. here. Blanton, a ground ball pitcher. Fastball strike and Blanton ahead 0 2. And Laduca getting into it with Marvin Hudson. And he's been thrown out of the game. Oh, that's a big mistake by Paul Laduca. You can't get thrown out of this game at this point. And he just was. What Willie's saying is that Laduca was going back into the batter's box when. Home plate umpire decided to throw him out. I think what the home plate umpire is mad at is that when Laduca pointed at the plate where the ball was, it's going to be a major snap here. Well, Laduca better watch it. You don't want to go anywhere near that umpire and touch him. Because Howard then Johnson. you're talking about a big suspension. He's got those crazy eyes going. And he's trying to get close to Marvin Hudson. And Ed Montague, the crew chief, trying to calm him down. Well, I think what really got Paul in trouble was his initial reaction. He didn't just turn. He went back toward the umpire and really showed him up. Meanwhile, Willie continues the discussion with Marvin Hudson. And uh, Ed Montague trying his best to steer LaDuke over toward the dugout. And finally, he'll leave. And that will probably cost him. And that'll cost him more. And for the Mets' sake, you hope it's only a fine, but that could be a suspension right there. And that's not helpful. He's really not helping himself or his team right now. I mean, you understand the emotions of the game, but you can't you can't allow that to happen. Oh, fastball inside by Joe Blen. Laduca thought it was in and down. But I think you're right, Gary. The initial reaction, you never want to allow the fans to know that you're upset with the call. You never turn back, but you can always mention what is going on. Looks like a strike. And whether it was or not, th there's a way to argue and there's a way not to.
Well, baseball language, we call that a major snap there with Paul LaDuca. I think somebody will take a photo of those eyes and put them on a poster. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll see what impact this has on Blanton, who's had to stand around and wait while uh, Laduca was steered out of uh, out of harm's way, and the field cleaned up after he threw his bat and his helmet and his batting gloves and his shin guards on the field. Ramon Castro will take over the at bat with an 0-2 count. Castro, of course, will take over behind the plate for Laduca. And Willie is left without a backup catcher now in a scoreless game in the sixth inning. This is always a strange thing for a pitcher because you've set up the previous hitter, Laduca, with the pitches you've thrown to him, but there's no setup now anymore because Ramon Castro now in this 0 2 count just looking for something to put into play. If the at bat results in a strikeout, the strikeout would be charged to Laduca. Any other result, it's Castro's because he inherits an 0 and 2 count. Two in scoring position with one out. And Castro swings and misses. And put that in the books as a strikeout charge to Laduca, not to Castro. So now there are two out in the inning. And Blanton will take on Carlos Beltran. And again, from a Mets standpoint, you hope that Laduca did not earn himself a suspension with his actions. As Beltron lays off and takes ball one. Well, last night the Mets got some two out hits, got some base hits with runners in scoring position. See if they can continue it here against this tough pitcher, Blanton. Beltron lays off and it's 2 0. Oh. So Blanton trying to get him to go after the changeup. Beltron had a broken bat infield hit his last time up, six hits in his last three games. On 2 0. Oh. He takes low ball three a walk would load the bases for David Wright. So Blanton had just issued his first walk of the night to Reyes now in a hole here against Beltron who does like to swing three and oh. And he lines a base hit in the left field. Here comes Lede around third. Here comes Bucks throw to the plate. The slide out at the plate. Terrific throw from left field by Travis Buck. Great job by Jason Kendall to disguise the fact that the throw was on the way. And Kendall put the tag on Lede to keep this game scoreless. Well, good job by Buck charging. And Lede with the slide by trying to get the hand in. And Kendall with the tag. Well, the rookie Travis Buck, who had difficulty on a ball hit by Sean Green in right field last night, handled this play perfectly, throwing out Ricky Lede at the plate. Good throw on the fly all the way to Kendall, who disguised the tag, and good slide by Lede. It really looks like it's bang bang at the plate as he tries to get that left hand in while Kendall applies the tag. Hard to call whether he got him on that elbow or shoulder. Castro takes over behind the plate after finishing the at bat for Laduca. Bobby Crosby takes a curveball for a strike. Well, it's almost impossible to tell. It was a very, very close play. Line over short base hit for Crosby, his first hit in this series. And the A's have their sixth hit off El Duque and the leadoff man on in the seventh. One more look at that play. The catcher, Jason Kendall. Well, there was a tag and there was a hand on home plate, but it's almost impossible to know. In any event, Marvin Hudson, who ejected Paul LaDuca, called Lede out to keep the game scoreless. Here's Jason Kendall. And we'll see what the A's have in mind here because Blanton is going to hit. There's no way they're taking him out. So uh, 
See how they operate here with Kendall at the plate. Kendall had a base hit his last time up, dropped one in front of Sean Green in shallow right field. And he takes the breaking ball for a strike. And if anyone's going to run, it'll be Bobby Crosby. He's got six stolen bases for the A's. Of course, there are two ways of looking at that, though. If he gets thrown out, all of a sudden it just takes all the starch out of the inning. Yep. Would you think about playing hit and run? Well, Kendall's always been a good hit and run man. He's used to hit a lot in the second hole. But let's say Kendall doesn't get a hit here, then you'll bunt with Blanton and you'll have a man in scoring position, albeit with two outs. Well, Duque up to 100 pitches now, and the Mets will start the bullpen working. Pedro Feliciano throwing. You got left hand hitters Buck and Kotze behind the pitcher Blanton. 0 oh 2 now to Kendall. And he just missed the outside corner, 1 and 2. <laughs> the crowd remembering the call on Leduca. Wanted that call for El Duque. Well, that ball's outside. Did not come back enough. One and two to Kendall. Takes a little look over at that hole on the right side. There goes Crosby, and it's shot foul. So they did play hit and run. Unusual to do it with yeah. a one and two count. Well, Kendall has such good bat control. I mean, I know he's been struggling with getting hits. But in his heyday, he was great at hitting behind the runner. So Bob Guerin gave it a shot. Of course, the problem with hit, hitting and running on one and two is that you risk the pitch out, which busts the play. Runner not going and he lifts it to right center. Beltron gets over. And back to first goes Crosby, one away. So one out and one on. Pitcher Blanton will come up. Let's answer our Dodge trivia question. Most home runs in Philadelphia athletics history. Double X, Jimmy Fox. 302 home runs in his Philadelphia A's career. So one out and one on. Mets will look for the bunt from Blanton, who has already sacrificed once in this game. Gives himself up, and Wright is right on top of him now, and he fouls it back. Now Wright completely committed to the bunt to try and smother him and try and get him out at second base. Yeah, I would. Uh, if I was batting, I would pull back and take a swing. On if that first uh, pitch. If I were David Wright, I would fear for my teeth <laughs> as close as he was. He's got the Major League Dental Program. <laughs> Come on in, David. <laughs> See if he charges quite as hard on this second pitch. Here he comes. And Blanton fouls off another one. So after El Duque was unable to get a bunt down in the last inning, now Blanton, who's already been successful once, puts himself in an 0 and 2 hole. And this is all from David Wright. David Wright putting all that pressure is making Blanton make a try to make a perfect bunt to the right side, and he's been unsuccessful. So do you commit as much with two strikes now? I don't think you commit as much, but if I'm Bob Guerin, the A's manager, he's taking another shot at bunt. Here comes Wright. And the bunt fouled off strike three. Well, the combination of an El Duque and Wright did a number on the head of Joe Blanton trying to bunt. Now you talk about base runners who put pressure on a pitcher by their mere presence. That's a fielder putting pressure on a hitter by his presence. Just more and more of the maturity of David Wright taking more charge out there in the field knowing the situation know what the other team's got to do and putting that pressure on Blanton. That's six strikeouts now for El Duque so two out Crosby still at first and here's Buck who's one for three. Gary Cohen Ron Darling Kevin Burkhart with you from Shea Stadium. Mets and athletics in a terrific pitchers duel between El Duque and Joe Blanton. 
No score as we play the top of the seventh. Travis Buck the batter with a runner at first and two out. And Crosby goes diving back. Well, you got to think Crosby's thinking of going. A couple of reasons. One, he wants to get in the scoring position. If he happens to be thrown out, Buck is the leadoff hitter, begins the next inning. But secondly, Castro's now 0 for 14 and throwing out base runners. Change up to Buck misses, and it's two and zero. Oh. You got another left-hand hitter on deck in Kotze. You've got El Duque up to 108 pitches, so you get a feeling that if he doesn't get Buck out, we'll see Feliciano to pitch to Kotze. Well, both pitchers in 2-0, 2-1 situations have been going soft instead of hard. We'll see what El Duque does. Again, the change up, and he fouls it off. And that's the education of a big league hitter isn't it. It is is that you're not going to get that pitch. That you get down in triple A or double A that automatic 2 0 or 2 1 or 3 0 fastball. Travis Buck has had about one hundred and seventy five at bats now in the big leagues. Just two years removed from. A great college career at Arizona State. Two and one the count. There goes Crosby. The pitch inside. Castro's throw into the runner and into center field. Crosby will hold as Beltron backs the play up. So Bobby Crosby with his seventh stolen base of the year. And now the tie breaking run in scoring position. Well, it's fastball in. Should have been a decent ball for Castro to throw, but this throw is way offline. No play for Jose Reyes as he's trying to avoid the runner at the same time. So now the A's are a base hit away from grabbing the lead. It's three and one to Travis Buck. You can see what happening. Laduca and Hernandez were working very well in the middle innings, and now you have a new catcher and going a little slower here between Castro and El Duque. And they'll have a face to face chat now and El Duque is not a happy camper at all. He turned his back as Castro began to come out toward the mound. This is where a pitcher will say three one count. I would say to the catcher if you have trouble calling the pitch. I'd say hey this is what I want to throw on this three one count. If it's a strike and we get to three two this is what I'm going to throw at three two. But here's Castro's value. He just made El Duque smile. <laughs> Makes yeah. everyone smile. He certainly does. <laughs> Anything to lighten the moment. Ramon has that ability. Three and one the count to Buck. And the fastball misses inside. And so Buck works out the walk. First walk of the night issued by El Duque. So now Willie has a decision to make. He's got Feliciano ready. And he's going to go to him right here. With Katze coming up. Two men on and two men out in the top of the seventh in a scoreless game. El Duque done after 111 pitches. I'm not sure he's ready to leave. And maybe Willie will give him the chance. He's asking him. So he's not done. Generally, when Willie comes out, his mind is made up. Well, that's the respect that a veteran pitcher will get. Willie will go out there and ask him how's he feel. And of course, most pitchers will tell you they feel fine and probably. Willie in his own mind thinks that the matchup with Feliciano might be better except that El Duque against Kotze tonight three rollover ground balls. Well, he's, th he's throwing him change ups all night. Does he alter the pattern here or keep throwing change ups. I think he continues to throw change ups down. Two on and two out no score seventh inning and Kotze takes the change up wide. Three at bats three ground balls to second base. Or as Andy Van Slyke once called it, the summer of four to three. <laughs> and the curveball misses high, and now El Duque behind two and zero. Oh. So what's he got up his sleeve next with the switch hitting Nick Swisher on deck? Well, he threw a two zero -oh change up the Buck. I'm sure Kotze is going to get the same pitch. A strike with it, two and one.
Well, he decided to stay with his veteran, who has been pitching a gem tonight, about to throw his 115th pitch in his biggest spot of the night. And Kotze takes inside three and one. Boy, El Duque really wanted that one. After all the changeups, pumped it up to 89 miles an hour. He could have thrown that right down the middle. No way Kotze could have swung at that pitch. Now behind three and one, what has he got? Fastball fouled off, and it's three and two. Well, one pitch. When you're out there on that hill, saying to yourself, I need to make one pitch, one more pitch. He'll wait a moment before he throws it. Crosby at second, Buck at first. They'll be running with three and two and two down. Three two to Katze. Fouled away. And they'll do it again. In his last two starts, El Duque got roughed up by the Dodgers and the Yankees. But tonight, he's held the A's scoreless through six and two thirds. And Blanton has matched him. Rolled over, foul. So he had the same game plan in mind that with Kotze that he's used all night. Could he throw him change ups all night? Who on his 119th pitch be able to blow him away with a fastball? We'll see what the choice is here for El Duque. Struck it! El Duque went soft on three and two, and he strikes out Katze to strand a pair. Seven shutout innings for Orlando Hernandez. David Wright takes a curveball for a strike as we start at the bottom of the seventh. Mets energized by Orlando Hernandez's performance tonight. Now they'll try and get a run off Joe Blanton, but Blanton was a couple of breaking balls ahead on right 0 and 2. Well, you don't get to nickname El Duque without being able to throw some regal pitches. Boy, what a matchup that was. In there for a call strike three. Talk about pitching. Blanton sets up right with a couple of curves, gets him looking at a fastball. Bat on the shoulder, three pitches are done. David Wright slips. I think he said that ball's outside. He has an argument. So one out and nobody on. No, El Duque throwing in a nice little wrinkle that time to get that third strike against Kotze. 119 pitches. And now the Mets would love to get him a run to give him a chance for a win. 2 0 to Delgado, who's lined out to first into a double play and grounded out 0 for 2. And he rips one foul. Well, the Brooklyn Cyclones action continues at Keyspan Park tomorrow night through Wednesday night. It's a tough ticket. Get it now at BrooklynCyclones.com. Two and one to Delgado. And the breaking ball from Blanton in for a strike. He's had that pitch working two and two. 2 0 changeup, 2 1 curveball, 12 to 6. Even buckles the left handed hitting Delgado. 
of Blanton has been right on the top of his game all through the month of June. He's continuing it tonight. And that curve ball bounced foul. Well, Duque bouncing back from a couple of subpar efforts and pitching at Jim tonight. Blanton just continuing what he already had going. He had eight solid innings against Cincinnati in his last start, giving up just one run. Big crowd here at Shea on a Saturday night, first Saturday night home game, and it has been a tense pitcher's duel. 2 2 to Delgado. Popped it up and foul ground. Chavez has a play. Two out. Work with his starts up in the eyes of Delgado and straight down. Ends up at his knees, start at his eyes. That, my friends, is a curveball. Ooh. So Blanton continues to frustrate the Med hitters, and now here's Sean Green with two out. And Sean takes a fastball low. Green twice is grounded out to the right side after a big night last night. Remember, he hit his home run the other way in last night's game. This that one foul, and it's one and one. Blanton has been moving that ball around so nicely. The sequence of pitches are, are great. If he gets ahead of you, he'll use that fastball, hit spots. If he gets behind you, he goes soft. And that curveball misses low and inside. As Green stopped the swing, two and one. He pitches enough inside to the left-handers to get him off the plate just enough so he can go back with that change up down and away. We end up with a ground ball. That's a great idea for such a young guy. Just 26 years old in his third full season. And Green pops it up. And Crosby takes charge of this one. And Blanton's got himself a one, two, three inning. So after El Duque got himself out of a jam, Blanton throws up a zero, and we're still scoreless. You can still cast your vote through next. This Sunday, Infinity brings you the most amazing play of the week. Don't miss Infinity's play of the week this Sunday on the CW11 News at Brought to you by Infinity. The Mets trying to make it two straight over the Oakland Athletics, and Orlando Hernandez trying to snap a personal two-game losing streak. Right on top of his game tonight, the Bugs Bunny curve got Eric Chavez. Paul Leduca didn't think that was a strike, and the Mets lost their catcher as a result. And then Leduca really lost it. El Duque, though, kept on throwing and made his way through seven shutout innings, but he'll get a no decision tonight because Joe Blanton's been just as good as we look at our line score brought to you by Infinity Beyond Machine. Two terrific pitchers with vastly different styles matching zeros tonight as we go to the eighth. New pitch for the Mets, Pedro Feliciano. Had a perfect inning three days ago against the Minnesota Twins. The only alarming thing for Feliciano has been his walks. 14 in 26 innings pitched. He'll take on the heart of the batting order. Swisher, Chavez, and Johnson in the top of the eighth. Nick Swisher, one for three. Turns around to bat right-handed and takes a strike. And this has been Swisher's better side this year. He's hitting 359 as a right hand batter. Lays off and it's inside one and one. Well the Mets have gotten plenty of help today. The Braves lost the Phillies lost the Marlins are getting clubbed by the Twins tonight 10 one in the seventh. So the Mets can make some hay in the standings if they can win this game. There's a strike and it's one and two to Swisher. Feliciano's retired 26 out of 32 first batters he's faced this year. That is tremendous. That's a 188 on base percentage against him by the leadoff hitter. And that's quite a formula for success. Two and two to Swisher. Been very interesting watching the way Willie Randolph has used his bullpen these last couple of weeks. 
And the breaking ball in there for a call strike three. Wrapped it around the outside corner, and Swisher goes down looking. One away. And Swisher pauses for that extra note. Well, it's that backdoor slider from Feliciano. And that's why Willie's been able to go to him against the right handers. He has a lot of weapons. That ball caught the plate. He has that changeup he also uses against right handed hitters. He might not have caught the front corner of the plate, but it seemed like he caught the back corner of the plate. Here's Eric Chavez with one out. And he pounds one off Castro's mask in back, and it's 0 1. The big games, the big hits, the big plays. We've seen some amazing baseball so far this season here on the CW11. And now the Mets are looking to head into the All Star break with a big road win against the Astros. Mets Astros, Sunday, July 8th at 2 here. On the CW11. More than 52,000 on hand tonight here at Shea. Watching this tense pitcher's duel. And Chavez takes a fastball for a strike. Willie has said repeatedly he does not have roles for his relievers other than Billy Wagner. And day by day, he's proving that that's true because. You know, one day he'll put Scott Schoenweiss in the big lefty spot. Another day it's Feliciano. Down to first base, off the glove of Delgado, and safe at first is Chavez. Well, Delgado ranging wide, and it clanked off his glove for an error. The second of the night for the Mets infield. Well, good range by Delgado, but kind of overran that ball as it ran up his arm. Could not find it in the webbing. Once that ball bounces away, that is a done play. Chavez on first base on the error. Now we're going to get a pinch hitter. With Dan please. Johnson, a left hand hitter, due up. Bob Guerin will go to Shannon Stewart, who had such a big role in the uh, A's offense last night with three hits, including a home run. And Willie will counter that move by going to the right hander and bring in Aaron Heilman. And that means we might see Jack Cust, who has been the DH for the Athletics this year and is a very big left hand hitter. So Feliciano exits. This call to the bullpen brought to you by American Express and Aaron Heilman will come on. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Audi. Truth in engineering. Well, Aaron Heilman on for the Mets. He has stranded all 15 inherited runners this year. He pitched in last night's ball game, gave up a hit, but no runs in an inning of work. And he gave up that hit to Shannon Stewart, who will stay on to pinch it against the right hander. With the tie breaking run at first, and Chavez is chased back. Well, the Mets, who had fielded so well this year, have now made seven errors in their last four games. Two tonight, one by Valentin that did not cost El Duque in the sixth, and now one by Delgado that the Mets hope will not cost them here in the eighth. And Heilman throws the fastball for a strike. Last night, Shannon Stewart accounted for the only Oakland run with a second inning home run off Tom Glavin, his fourth of the year. And Stewart had three of the seven Oakland hits, which made it puzzling that he wasn't in the lineup today. But he's up now. And Howman misses with a fastball, one and one. Shannon Stewart, at one time a feared leadoff hitter in Minnesota and Toronto, missed most of last year with a foot injury and signed on with the A's. Howman misses away. Staying with the fastball, it's two and one. David Wright guarding the line in the late innings. I've seen Heilman when he gets in these situations sometimes and he overthrows a little, doesn't hit his spots. Castro wanted that fastball inside, kind of held on to it too long. You don't often see him throw three fastballs in a row, though. And he comes right back with it, and Shannon Stewart couldn't stop the swing, and it's two and two. Well, I like when he uses his fastball more because then he gets away with that change when he doesn't make it a perfect pitch. And now using that fastball sets up Stewart for a great changeup. Castro wants it. 
Stewart swings over. Two men down. Well, nice pitching by Aaron Hammond. Good calling of the game by Castro. Set him up for that changeup. And when you set up a batter like that, that's the kind of swings that you will get. So two away. Chavez still at first, and here's Mark Ellis, who's two for three in the game. No score, we're in the eighth. And Ellis fouls it off. We've got a lot of the hitters talking to themselves tonight, don't you? <laughs> Shaking their head, talking to themselves. Well, you had uh, El Duque and his repertoire from 89 down to 53. You got Blanton and that great curveball. You have Feliciano with the backdoor slider, and now you got Heilman with that fastball changeup combination. Up the middle, Reyes to his left, runs it down with the flip, and the side is retired. So Halman comes on and gets two big outs, and the Mets will come to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. Still no score in this game, with Valentin set to lead off. Mets will come up against Joe Blanton trying to break the scoreless tie. Shannon Stewart still shaking his head about that Halman changeup. Moves into left field. Travis Buck in right. As Valentin takes a strike, and Nick Swisher moves from right field to first base for the A's. Blanton's gone all the way. This will be his 99th pitch. And Valentin rips one into right field for a base hit. And the Mets have the leadoff man on in the bottom of the eighth. One of the rare curveballs that Blanton has hung in the eyes of Valentin. Nice hitting. Staying back and delivering this hit to right field. So now Ricky Lede will come up and everybody will look for the bunt. Lede double down the right field line his last time up. Ruben Gotai has moved out on deck to bat for Aaron Howman. And Lede fouls off the bunt attempt. Well, Blanton must be saying to himself, why me? He's been shut out twice this year. The Washburn 2 0 game in Seattle, and of course, Kirk Schilling. His no hitter into the ninth that was broken up with two outs in the ninth. Well, the opposing pitcher was Joe Blanton. Santiago Casilla is up in the Oakland bullpen. Lede lays off, and it's off the plate. One and one. Takes a long look down at Sandy Alomar to see if that bunt is still on. The A's have been shut out five times this year. Their offense has not been a thing of beauty. So it's been tough for all those Oakland starters who have really kept them above water this year. Valentin falls back to the bag. Let's try to scratch out a run here in the bottom of the ninth and hand it off to Billy Wagner. See Julio Franco with a helmet on. And the curveball in for a strike. And it's one and two to Lede. That's the pitch you got a bunt. He thought it was going to be a ball, but that late break from Blanton brings that pitch back into the strike zone. So what do you do on one and two with a Lede? Valentin at first and nobody out. No score bottom of the eighth. And he takes it low as he was set to swing away two and two. Billy Wagner getting set for the ninth. He'll be on whether it's a tie or whether the Mets have the lead. Hoping the Mets can get him a run and create a save opportunity. A lot on Lede's shoulders right now. On two and two, he takes it in there for a call strike three. Five strikeouts for Joe Blanton. One out. Blanton doubled up on the fastball. His pitch, I think Ridley Day thought that was down, but Hudson has had a very big strike zone. It definitely caught part of the plate. So now Ruben Gotai will bat for Aaron Howman. Gotai has been terrific. He's hitting 308. 
three home runs. And Ruben lays off the high changeup, 1 0. So Ty is a pinch hitter, 5 for 14. It's a 357 pinch hit batting average. And the Mets could sure use one in the gap right now. So Ty dribbles it foul. One ball, one strike. Well, Bland just threw his 106 pitch. He's gone as high as 118 this season. Two complete games. Big strong guy. Yeah. 6'3, 250 pounds. Bob Guerin's going to go as far as he can with him. He's got the rookie Cassia up in the bullpen. They've had so many injuries to their relief corps with their closer Houston Street on the DL. Justin Dukeshire also a, a prime setup man on the DL. They used Rich Harden his first game back from the DL last night in relief but they can't pitch him back to back days so he's not available. So that really straps Guerin in the bullpen. He's been using Alan Embry the veteran lefty as his closer. So Ty swings and misses at the fastball and it's one and two. And now Ruben behind in the count. We'll cut down that swing a little bit. That's broke out offensively last night, but they've been held in check by Joe Blanton tonight. And Gotai swings and misses at the curveball. Back to back strikeouts for Joe Blanton. And there are two men down. Now he's had a terrific night. That's six strikeouts for Blanton. Yeah, he was rolling around with just one strikeout, but really has added those strikeout totals in the last couple of innings. So now Jose Reyes, who's 0 for 2 in a walk, Blanton sort of pitched around him in the sixth inning. And Jose drew his 41st walk of the year. And he chops one to the right side. Ellis waits on the hop, throws out Reyes, and we're going to the ninth in a scoreless game. Joe Blanton with an outstanding effort over eight innings. And now Billy Wagner will come on and try and keep it tied. The out of town scoreboard brought to you by Audi Truth and Engineering. The Cardinals beat the Phillies this afternoon behind Adam Wainwright. Justin Verlander, 11 strikeouts in seven innings as the Tigers beat the Braves. Braves finally scored a run on the Chipper Jones home run. The Marlins getting trashed as Josh Johnson in his second start got beat up again tonight. Joe Maurer with three RBIs. The Nationals, Brandon Watson, 43 game hitting streak in the minors. Big game last night, two more hits tonight. Joe Blanton getting congratulations after eight shutout innings. No score as we start the ninth. Billy Wagner on to face Bobby Crosby and a little ground ball past Wagner. Valentin, tough play, bare head. Can't be handled by Delgado. And safe at first is Crosby. Uh, they're going to give him credit for a base hit, but if Delgado catches that ball, he's out. Well, you see Billy Wagner, if he could have got to this play, made it much easier. Valentin came up with a hard toss. It's one that Carlos will have to tell you. He's got to handle that play. It is a hard toss from a short distance, but that play's got to be made. Why has he got his arms in toward his body like that? Here's Jason Kendall looking to sacrifice and Wagner will keep Crosby close. In that in that instance with the throw coming your way you're kind of trying to ready yourself for wherever the throw is going to be if it's a bad throw but that ball's got to be caught in front as we look at the numbers from Billy Wagner. Worked a one two three inning in his last outing on Wednesday. Kendall drops down a beauty of a bunt and Wagner will have to go to first. 1 4 on the sacrifice, and now the tab breaking run is in scoring position with Crosby. I mean, Valentin could not have played that ball better, and I just don't understand why Delgado, instead of stretching, has got his arms in toward his body. Yeah, that play's got to be made out front. Simple as that. Just uh, got caught. 
Your really maybe expecting a little softer throw, but he's got to have that glove extended. So now we'll get a pinch hitter with Blanton due up. The former Met Marco Scudero will come up to pinch hit. Scudero played parts of a couple of seasons as a Met. Pinch hit in last night's game and struck out against Tom Glavin. And Rick Peterson will bring a scouting report out to Billy Wagner. So it's been a tough night in the field for Delgado. He made an error in the eighth inning that opened the door. But Hyman was able to close it. Now he fails to make a play in the ninth, although it's not scored an error. And I'm not quite sure why. But again, it opens the door for the A's to potentially take the lead. Well, Scudero hitting for Blanton. I can't say enough good things about Joe Blanton. I, I haven't been that impressed with a young pitcher in a long time. Not because of his stuff but because he knew what he was doing he had a great idea game plan to get hitters out. Well the Mets have now faced Blanton twice once in Oakland in 05 and then tonight and they still haven't scored a run against him. In some 15 innings. So here's Scudero who's been a great clutch hitter for the A's these last couple of years and he takes ball one. Scudero is filled in admirably when both Ellis and Crosby the middle infielders have been hurt from time to time and sometimes for a lot of time <laughs> especially yeah. in Crosby's case. Wagner trying to keep this game tied in the ninth. In the air to right field Green has room. And that's the second out and Crosby holds it second. So two away. And now Billy will take on the left hand batting Travis Buck. The right fielder Travis Buck. It's so different for an American League manager to maneuver his bench and his bullpen in a game like this than it would be in an American League park. Well Blanton probably has too many pitches now but if you're in an American League park you, you have to think about leaving Blanton in. Here's Buck one for three and a walk. And Wagner's fastball in for a strike. Buck not only has a hit and a walk today, he has an outfield assist that cut down Ricky Lede at the plate in the sixth inning as the Mets put together their best threat to score. Crosby at second and two out. Fouled away, and Wagner ahead on Buck 0 and 2. Mets will have Castro, Beltron, and Wright coming up at the bottom of the ninth. Like Willie's trying to position his outfielders. Move the day a little bit further toward the left field line. And now he moves Reyes over in the hole at short as well. 0 oh 2 to Buck. Up and away with a fastball, 1 and 2. And that's a good maneuvering, figuring yes. that with two strikes, he's going to be shortening up and going the other way. Only problem you run into is if Billy Wagner centers a, a breaking pitch here against Buck. Missed with the slider, and it's two and two. Another left hand hitter Mark Kotze on deck. First base open so room to maneuver for Billy. Two two to Buck. Fouled away. A nice job wasting away that fastball. This Travis Buck has an idea too at the plate. Well Buck was considered the A's number one prospect coming into the year and with all the injuries to their outfielders, he has taken over this leadoff spot and run with it. And he's hitting 282. Struck him out. Billy Wagner blows away Travis Buck. And the Mets will come to bat in the bottom of the ninth. 
looking for a walk-off win after Wagner keeps it tied. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Mets and Athletics, no score. The catcher, Romo. Charlie Sheen and John Cryer join the CW11 family this fall in the Emmy-nominated hit comedy, Two and a Half Men. If you think your life is crazy, wait till you see what goes on in this house. Get in on the dysfunctional family fun. Weeknight starting September right here on the CW11. Rookie right-hander Santiago Casilla is on to pitch. Even has a couple of saves with that bullpen. A mess for the A's as far as Houston Street their closer not giving up a run Ramon Castro the batter and he takes a breaking ball for a strike Castro came in the game in the sixth inning when Paul LaDuca snapped after a strike two call and was ejected Castro uh, registered the third strike for LaDuca's at bat this is his first at bat of his own and he waves at the slider and it's 0 and 2. Santiago Casilla, another one of those players to be named later. He was known as Jairo Garcia until last year <laughs> when it turned out he had been faking. <laughs> How many pitchers has this happened to? Line down the left field line by Castro. That's an extra base hit going to the corner. Castro lumbering his way to second. And the Mets have the leadoff man in scoring position looking to win it in the bottom of the ninth. Now the problem is you can't run for Castro because Loduca was ejected from the game. And he just saw Valentin said a clap and you go run for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice hitting on us. All two slider by Castro, keeping those hands back. With the Mets in business, ironic that Loduca gets tossed from the game and his successor Castro gets the big hit here in the ninth. Now Beltron will be intentionally walked. This will set up the double play possibility bringing up David Wright. Well the problem of course is getting Castro home now. He is so slow. It's probably going to take two hits to get him in. And in any other situation other than Laduca having been ejected Castro would be out of the game and the Mets would have Gomez in their pinch running for him. But you can't do that because if you don't win it in the bottom of the ninth well then you don't have a catcher for the tenth. One of those things in the National League that just don't have the luxury of carrying that extra catcher. Kurt Young not to talk to his young pitcher. Garcia has actually pitched parts of three seasons with Oakland in 04, 05, and 06, but few enough innings that he's still considered a rookie. But he's not all that young. You know, the reason he had the different name is because he was pretending to be younger than he was. He's going to be 27 years old this year. Well, I can see about the age, but Santiago Garcia is a good name. <laughs> huh? Yeah, but the name had a certain birth date attached I know, to it. I know. <laughs> Whoever Jairo Garcia was, he was a lot younger. <laughs> Jay Marshall, another rookie left-hander in the bullpen for the A's. He'll be ready for Delgado, who was up after right, and then you got Delgado and Green, two lefties in a row. David is one for three. Castro at second, Beltran at first, and nobody out. And the breaking ball in for a strike. I see it's showing a good slider. Well, that is what you're going to see from Cassia. Steady diet of sliders. And David tries to hold. And he held in time. And Montague with the call down at first, one and one. And fastball down and in. Boy, this is going to look. That looks like he went through there on that fastball. Maybe we've got a break from Montague. Slider hit to right, shallow. In comes Buck. Dive, he can't get it! Castro to third, the ball rolls free. Castro will score, and the Mets win it!
Ramon Castro comes rumbling home with the winning run. A double for David Wright. The Mets have snapped their series of losing series as they've taken the first two from Oakland, winning it at the bottom of the ninth, one to nothing. Well, the Mets, after losing six straight series, needed a big hit. Got it from right. That's off the end of the bat. Kind of fooled Buck, who was playing very deep. Comes in with the slide. You know, Castro at second base was kind of holding up to see whether he was going to catch it or not. If he had played it on the hop, he certainly would not have scored as the Mets erupt. And you'd have to say that's a rookie mistake by Buck. He probably had no idea who was at second base. He had made a terrific defensive play earlier in the game to throw out Ricky Lede at home plate when he was playing left field. Here playing right field. David Wright knew he had the game winning hit and he jogged into second and because he did he'll get credit for a double. <laughs> Very good. The Mets have their fifth walk off win of the year as they beat the A's with a run in the bottom of the ninth one to nothing and give Billy Wagner his first victory of the season. Well, just a fine game with great pitching. El Duque was great in that seventh inning when he was running on fumes and got by and Joe Blanton cannot say enough good things about the big right hander for the A's. Well a great pitchers duel and the Mets win it in the bottom of the ninth doubles by Castro and Wright and the Mets win it back in just a moment. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Sterling Mets and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Sterling Mets. Well the Mets on a moonlit night at Shea Stadium win it. Here's your Jeep game summary. Bottom of the ninth game winning double by David Wright bringing home Ramon Castro with the only run of the game. Joe Blanton was great for Oakland. El Duque was just as good for the Mets but the Mets win it against the Oakland bullpen as Santiago Casilla never retired a batter in the bottom of the ninth and Billy Wagner picks up the win. Pitching the bottom of the ninth your Duncan Road uh, Donuts first run of the game only run of the game winning run of the game brought to you by Duncan Donuts. David Wright drives in Ramon Castro as Travis Buck made an ill fated dive and the Mets win it one to nothing as they've taken two straight from the Oakland Athletics and they'll go for the sweep tomorrow. Back with more from Shea in just a moment. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Jeep a growing line of legendary vehicles by Verizon working for you by Nissan and your local Nissan dealers. By American Express, you don't have to be famous to make a difference, just a card member. And by Mazda, always the soul of a sports car. The Mets win it one to nothing over the A's and stretch their lead to three games in the National League East. Be sure to take the train to Shea tomorrow afternoon for the finale against the A's and then the 2006 World Champion St. Louis Cardinals kick off a four game series on Monday evening here at Shea. Go to Mets.com today for your tickets. Well the Mets getting a great starting pitching for the second straight night. Tom Glavin last night. El Duque tonight both bouncing back and uh, doing the job and the Mets found a way to win it in the end. Yeah El Duque was fantastic. Joe Blanton was even better for the Oakland A's and uh, Santiago Castillo had not given up a run all season long finally gives up a run to the Mets and Billy Wagner gets his first win and uh, Ramon Castro scored the winning run and isn't that apropos uh, Paul LaDuca gets ejected from the game and it's Castro who ends up being one of the heroes in the bottom of the ninth inning as David Wright drives him home with the only run of the game and the Mets pick up their fifth walk off win of the year we'll be back with more in a moment Both lost two. Not only did the Mets scratch out a win tonight, everybody else in the National League East lost. And so the Mets pick up ground on everybody. They lead by three over the Phillies, three and a half over the Braves. You see five and a half over the Marlins. Even the Nationals blew a late lead and were beaten by the Indians four to three. And so the Mets, who had been struggling so mightily, they had lost uh, 13 out of 16 going into last night. They win in dominant fashion last night. And tonight they got just enough to pull out that one nothing win over the Oakland A's. Well, it wouldn't be nice to make a good move right before the All-Star break with these few remaining games you have left. 
playing against Philadelphia, of course. St. Louis, the world champions are coming in, and it's a nice time for the Mets to try to make a move. I think more importantly, good to see Tom Glavin, El Duque, they're number one and two pitchers having those kind of efforts. When you have those kind of efforts, you can get Maine and Perez on board and maybe make a run. You know, the Mets are in the fifth of six consecutive series against playoff teams from last season. But this is a different kind of team that they're facing here. They're facing a team that's been dominant with pitching Oakland. Their attack has not been great. The Mets have taken advantage of that. Uh, they had a big offensive night last night. They didn't have a big offensive night tonight, but they had enough to win it in the end. You know, this is how the A's play, though. Out of the 73 games, 37 of them have been by two runs or fewer, and now they're 13-11 and 11 in one-run games. That's the most one-run games in baseball. Well, it was a scoreless game till the bottom of the ninth, and then David Wright dropped one that Travis Buck couldn't get to. If he plays it on a hop there, well, the bases are loaded, or maybe even gets a force in third on Castro, but... The Mets will take it right with the game-winning double. Mets win it one to nothing. Back to Shea in a moment. Well, it was a great pitcher's duel here at Shea tonight between El Duque and Joe Blanton. Orlando Hernandez bouncing back after two difficult starts to throw seven shutout innings. Blanton even better, eight shutout innings. El Duque had a couple of big moments in this game, particularly his last one when he struck out Mark Kotze with two men on to end the seventh. Blanton was just impeccable. He got saved by a great defensive play when Travis Buck threw out Ricky Lede at the plate in the sixth, but ultimately it was Buck failing to come up with David Wright's game-winning hit that won it for the Mets in the bottom of the ninth. Our next game on the CW11 tomorrow at 1 o'clock when the Mets go for the sweep of this series against the Oakland Athletics. Now stay tuned for the CW11 News at 10. Orlando Hernandez masterful tonight at that 53 mile an hour Bugs Bunny curveball going. It was a great pitcher's duel tonight. Paul LaDuca didn't stay around to see the end. But ultimately, it was his replacement who scored the only run of the game in the bottom of the ninth. Now for Ron Darling and Kevin Burkhart, I'm Gary Cohen saying so long from Shea Stadium. We'll see you right back out there tomorrow afternoon when the Mets go for the sweep.